What is up, Jacob? Uh, it's going good. Uh, I actually, I've started to love these Monte Carlos. I think I got them figured out. We're going to see if I can uh, win again in one. I'm taking it to Michigan. If I can get the seats out. What's up, Hammer Time? That seat is not happy. So the funny thing is, you mentioned the seat breaking. Last year, I, uh, I took a Gut and Go Monte Carlo into a modified mini class. I won. Night number two, very next night, I take it to a bone stock class and I get second place. But the seat broke and it was stuck all the way laid backwards. And I was pretty much laying down so that I could hit the gas pedal. And that was the worst fun I've ever had. Because I wasn't going to break off, but yet I still needed to hit the gas. And uh, I was so happy when I finally died and the car wouldn't restart. I didn't know you were trying to do rock, paper, scissors. I thought you were saying, let's go heads up, and I was all for that because I was like, let's get this over with. scissors we probably they probably would have broke both our sticks and gave it to that Honda that only had one front tire got any suggestions on what seat would be best to change these out with because I'm, pro I'm probably going to run this one but put a ratchet strap behind it I'm not sure how many people know this but I found out that you can actually take the passenger seat out of these and it bolts right into the driver's spot. And the same has gone for Crown Vic. I tried putting a van seat in one of these once and it was the seats out of like the Chevy Ventures and they have like a six inch lift at the bottom of them and the headrest was hitting the ceiling.
So is everybody getting the signal for the internet? Is it, am I coming through clear? Because I know, you know, we had an issue before. We just got new internet for the shop. Seeing if it works. You have a good one too, Hammer. I love them tune computers. I got mine from Randy Hahn about, I don't know, fuck, four to five years ago. Uh, I ran the Wicked Team Show. I had a carb W body. I was in the Concy, and it would only stay running wide open. And it was me against a team of three, and I went to one end of the track wide open, Went to cut a donut, car stalled out, and that was when I was like, fuck this carburetor, we're going to EFI. The only time my EFIs ever gave out, it's usually uh, after about 15 minutes of no water, then it, it shuts off. So I know once I lose the radiator, it's time to pick up, pick up the pace, because uh, I got 15 minutes. Once it cools down, fires right back up. Now I've talked to Randy and he says he has this new tune that will melt a block if you want it to. And I'm, I'm kind of interested in that because sometimes the situation calls for melting your engine down. If you can't win, just, you know, at least it'll look cool.
you guys can see this pretty much the whole bottom of this seat's rusted when you pull the lever there's little tabs here that stick into these teeth let me get closer so when you pull the handle there's a thing here stabs into the teeth and that's what locks in and unlocks your steering that side there was a uh, rusted shut For a second, thought I was going to have to like torch a seat out, and I was like, well, this is going to be horrible. But you got to breathe. Sometimes you just got to stop, take a drink of Mountain Dew, and just chill for a minute, and then carry on. Uh, this car had a rock under the seat. I have to take my simplified harness apart on the last run. Some of the wires got up on the headers and I need to see how much damage I did. I figure worst case scenario, I can take the harness out of this Monte Carlo and recreate a simplified harness. Hell yeah, I'm running Blizzard Bash. I have to, I have to redeem myself. Y'all remember what I did last year? Dude, I need a haircut, and uh, I'm doing this stuff so much, I haven't had time to go. So, I get picky about who cuts my hair. And the last time I had a haircut was the day after the Super Bowl. And I can tell you exactly where I was, because you don't forget a haircut like this. So, day after the Super Bowl, I went up to Indianapolis to meet up with Jason Sauer, Fatty, Backseat Bobby and the guys from Indy CNC. Now, Jason told me he was leaving Pittsburgh at like 4 a.m. So I did some calculating, trying to do some math of what time he would arrive, some time changes going on there. And, well, there was some miscommunication, and I got to Indy about three hours before everybody else so i said you know what i need a haircut i'm gonna go into sports clips the day after the super bowl like 8 30 a.m 9 a.m something like that and i'm gonna get a haircut so I'm sitting in the parking lot i see the lady unlock the door i walk in 
kind of like a bigger black lady and she looks at me walks to the back comes back out like 10 minutes later and goes you here for a haircut yeah so she's like come on I walk back she sits me down she goes what do you want I said well just make it shorter than what it is now and she goes well what number do you want I don't know three four like I don't she goes how old are you boy I said I'm 32 she goes 32 years old and you don't know how you get your hair cut I'm like damn I'm like I'm getting called out by the lady that cuts hair for a living and uh, I haven't got my hair cut since and you know I I left that story on a sports clip website and uh, they've offered me a free haircut but I ain't be getting one in Indy Tanner, don't you have an old iron relic car to be building? Ted, you're sitting here making fun of little Joe Dirt. Is this where you want to be when Jesus comes back? Hey, do you know what day you're uh, running on? Because we're thinking about going for Saturday only. Sunday, that's the Lord's Day. So I'm not saving the bolts, I, I am, but I'm not. So I have a giant metal dumpster that I talked to the local scrapyard about, you know, since I got a business, I said, hey, can you guys drop a dumpster off for my business? And they're like, absolutely. And I am determined to fill that thing full of nuts and bolts. Uh, I got a V6 engine out of one of these Debbie bodies that I'm gonna dump in there. probably give a pretty decent church sermon so I am somewhat religious and I used to go to church but what was it 2018 2019 it was before the pandemic and I was going to church every week until my ex-wife started coming in and she would sit down in front of me and she brought her new dude and I was like Jesus this isn't funny and so I stopped going to church because you don't need to go to church to believe in Jesus and you know talk to him so but I, I thought about trying to become a preacher or a pastor or something like that but I feel like my sermons need cuss words and I'm not sure if he would be okay with that. 
but hell, I'm getting the word out, so that's got to got to count for something. You know, just one time, I'd like to see a derby that allows passengers, and the passengers sit in the back seat. Like, why are they always in the in the front? If you allow passengers, you know, any seat should be an option, especially in a minivan. What we got here? Um. Okay, so this is some Satan worshiping. Uh, I don't. It's Oblivion. Illuminate Oblivion, and uh, y'all can guess what what's probably on that. That's Jesus testing me. That was at the bike barn, dude. That that van had like fucking six passengers in it. I talked about it on my podcast. I was like, those guys got, they got balls. Because the, they took the seats in the back and one of them, they like spun it around so that the passengers were looking at each other. Like that. That's a little too much. Kind of like me going back to Paoli. I'm not. I'm not doing that. Like, how often do you get to see a derby where the flag man is trying to fight drivers?
people at Paoli keep trying to invite me to come back, and it's like, I got gangbang there. I was in an 80s GM, and I had the factory drive train, factory drive shaft, everything. And these two guys had me in a corner, and they were just teeing off on me right in front of the officials. And I look, look at them like this, and the officials don't do a damn thing. So I'm actually at the entrance of the track, and every time I go forward trying to, like, rock off this wall, I'm hitting the skid steer, and the official's, like, waving me back. He's like, stop hitting the skid steer. And I'm like, have them stop hitting me. So I, I sat there for a minute. And this is where I learned my Mountain Dew drinking. I told myself, you know, sometimes you can't fight them anymore. You just got to give in, let them bang you. When they get bored, they'll go away. So they went to the other end of the track, and I had to talk with Jesus. And I was like, if you fire this car up one more time, I'm going to go down there, and I'm going to find that motherfucker. And uh, I full-tracked him, like, hey, motherfucker, I'm still here. And... Uh, I ended up losing reverse. He junked his shit, but I drove back to the trailer that night. Found another rock. So have you guys uh, checked out the podcast on Spotify yet? What do you guys think? I've had a very bad habit lately of building a whole derby car and then while I'm loading it on the trailer realizing that I forgot to add the seatbelt. And I know people are like, well, that's optional. The comfort level you get in a seatbelt is way better than not having one.
up, Ethan? You've missed the fun. It took like 10 minutes to get the front seat out. So, I have, I've lost a lot of derbies, way more than I've won, and at no point have I ever felt like trying to fight somebody after a derby. Like, to me, we're all out there for fun. I'm out there to make videos and entertain people. I'm like, I'm not trying to win. Yeah, we all got a lot of money wrapped up in it, but at the end of the day, you're not trying to lose money, don't do it. It's like I show up to a track and anymore everybody, all these derbies I go to, everybody wants to come up and talk to me. People get excited that I'm in their class, we're running the same heat, and everybody wants to work with me. Well, eventually, you know, we're going to get to a spot where I'm going to have to hit somebody. So, I'm like, I've I've never just been like, oh, I'm going to fight that guy. He did me wrong. I don't, I don't do that. Instead, I'll build a tougher car next year, and I'll leave on two and try to jump their ass. So the last time I went live, I was asking people like, how's the service, how's the signal, does it seem sketchy, because the live before that, everyone complained that it sucked. My daughter was watching, and she came up to me a couple days later, and she goes, your YouTube videos don't suck, those people are just mean. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she's like, well you said on your video, People said your video sucks. And I was like, alright, I okay.
So something I've been doing on all these like gut and go and bone stock builds I do, a lot of them won't allow you a door plate, but what I got is a door plate about this long, about this tall, and I slide it right down in the door on the inside. Nobody ever looks there. Nobody ever says anything about it. It makes a huge difference. Like when you start pulling your door, it don't take much before that door is touching you. Could you imagine like somebody hitting you and you go to fight them and they whip your ass? Like, be like, damn, you got your shit rocked twice. I think you'd have to, you'd have to change states. Like you wouldn't ever be able to run there again.
to take the rear window out without breaking it. It is possible. I've done it a few times, but it just takes so long. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. Probably, I think AutoZone's got them. And you get a, uh, it's called a window removal kit. Well, I guess there's, there's a couple ways to do it. So, the one I've seen, hang on a second, we almost there. Okay, so to take the back window out of a car without breaking it, there's a couple ways you can do it. One, you can get yourself a window removal kit, <clears throat> and it's like a little pick, and then it's going to come with like a piece of wire. It's going to look like piano wire. It's going to have holes on each end, and you kind of like pick at the silicone till you can get the wire through there. Then it takes two people and you pretty much saw all the way around the window. What professional window repairers use, they got this big box and you plug it into like a, a power source, usually like your uh, receptacles in your house, and you put it on the uh, seam and you will like work it all the way around. And what that does is it heats up and melts the uh, all the goo, and then you just pop it out. I used to use Sawzalls, and I would go all the way around it really easily. But it seems like every time I got about 80% around, and then it broke. So, I just started cutting out the middleman. Go ahead and break it just to begin with. Get a shot back. It's a lot faster for me. And majority of the time, I'm stripping these cars out for customers. And time is money. So the quicker I get them stripped out, the better. So I'll just break it and go about it. Oh, the ones in the doors? Uh, that's easy. That's easy. Uh, you get a drill bit and you drill straight through the rivet. What I usually do is hell I might make that a TikTok one day. So I use this guy here. This is what I usually use for my nine wire. But I also use it on rivets. You get it the center of the rivet, take a hammer, hit it it punches that rivet in just a hair and then I get like a quarter inch drill bit drilled through the center and once you get them all drilled out it pops right out
been using the drill bit to get the rivets out for door windows. You kind of got to get used to it because as far as I've seen so far, Cadillacs, Crown Vicks, Grand Marquises, and like 80s GMs, they're all that way. It took me, it took me probably two hours one day to get out a back window of an 05 uh, Lincoln Town Car. And because I was trying to do it every way except for drilling out the rivets. And I ended up searching it, and that's the only way they were coming out. There's, to me, there's nothing wrong with busting them out, but then, you know, I try to get the shop back down in the door to get the glass out. If you, if you bust it, then you can leave all of this in the door, and to me, that acts as more protection when someone's trying to drive through the door. The more meat you have in there, the better, but that's, that's just my opinion. I'm doing pretty good, Ryan. Uh, it took us took us about 10-15 minutes to get this driver's seat out. Uh, it did not didn't want to cooperate, but we got it out, and now uh, it's all downhill from there. broken my nose during a derby uh, it was my first big show uh, wicked team show 2018 2019 something like that I was in a Chevy Malibu 
and I was getting my ass handed to me all night long. And I finally seen one old boy, he backed up against the concrete wall, and I was at the other end of the track, and I thought to myself, well, he can't go nowhere. Full tracked him, I hit my head off the steering wheel, broke my nose, his car burst into flames. Fire department comes out there, they put his car out, and I yell at the fireman, I was like, hey, firefighter! He walked up to me, and I go, does my nose look broken? I got blood running all the way down my face. He goes, yeah, you want to come over to the ambulance? And I was like, I'll be over there in a little bit. I'm going to try to get my car started. Uh, it didn't start. I went over there, and pretty much all they wanted to do was just put a dog on it. dismissed uh, me and Tanner talking about my great run at Paoli and how I'll never go back. I've only been to Paoli once, uh, and that was the time I ran. Yeah, you have the uh, the flagmen trying to fight drivers. And apparently from from what I've heard it's like that every year. That year, would they have? They had five or six different heats, and after each heat, they pushed the cars to the entrance of the track. Like they push them off the track, and then they just leave them there. And to get to the track for the feature, it was I had to like swerve and zigzag. It was like driving through a fucking junkyard. If you haven't ran there, 
go there once and just watch the derby in person because have you ever played the game shoots and ladders where it's like a long ass like zigzaggy trail you start at the top and all that that's what their pits look like like to get to the their track is on the top of a hill and the pits are all down the hill and the road to get up there it's a giant s and i was just i was like what the hell are we doing i was scared that when i got pushed off the track since it was all downhill that i wouldn't have brakes and i was going to run into somebody the driver's door 11 times that night I hit the skid steer about 11 times that night because I was trying my damnedest to get off the wall feel free to bother me man i love it when people come up and talk uh it's nice to get to see and meet you know people that watch my videos and all of that because you know i do make money from you guys watching these videos so in a way you know it's like you guys are paying me like i work for you guys so hell yeah if you see me out and about unless i'm crying uh which happens sometimes. You know, it's okay. Macho Man said it was okay to cry sometimes. Uh, yeah, like, come up and talk to me. Uh, you know, there's a chance, depending how I do in this Monte Carlo, I might be up in Eaton, Ohio uh, later this year at some of the uh, Unified Point shows. I, I think there's like three or four of them. Two, three, five. There's a bunch of shows there that are unified point shows so right now i've dropped down to like the top 20 but if i can get back in the top 10 i will definitely be back to eaton ohio This year, you know, I'm I'm chasing the unified points, and I'm gonna move that fucking camera. Well, you guys are only seeing my head. Look at this. It's like fucking whack-a-mole. No, we're trying to have an award-winning pod or YouTube channel. Uh, let me bring y'all into the car with me. We still good? Everybody still here? You guys good? Yeah. You're still there. Okay. Where was I? Let me back up a little bit. Okay. So, this year, I'm chasing the unified points. But next year, I'm thinking about going where my fans are. So, in about a month, June 1st, I'm going to post this competition I'm going to have and the winning state, I'm going to go there and I'm either going to run in a derby or we're going to throw one hellacious like parking lot party at a derby.
Never seen a 93 Ford Escort run. Bro, I was the fucking king of Escorts back in the day. Escort wagon. Escort sedan. <clears throat> so, when I first got into derbies, uh, Ford Escorts was my first derby car, and I had one, it had four or five runs on it, and the front frames on them were shit, and, like, at one point, the frame was tore off, and I just had two patch plates holding it back together so that I'd have a, have a spot to put my front bumper, and, uh, yeah, ended up, to me, I told everybody that in a Ford Escort, I was just hoping that other cars would die when they hit me. Like, I, I wasn't hurting nobody when I hit them. Like, I was just like a punching bag. You fold it in half, it kept running around the track, a little 2.2 .2 liter. But once I got in the W bodies, like, I would not run a Ford Escort against the W body. But in one of those classes where it's like a 105 inch wheelbase or less, 100% I'd climb back into a Ford Escort. Uh, 05 Taurus, uh, wouldn't be bad. Uh, make sure that it doesn't have an inertia switch and if it does, hot wire it. And then the front spindles, I'm gonna guess. To me, I'm just guessing everything after 2002 has aluminum spindles, so either don't get hit in the front tire, or find something to swap them out. I feel like I'm on an episode of MTV Cribs, like... What's up, everybody? Welcome to my Monte Carlo. Come on in. Whatever happened to that show? And whatever happened to Pimp My Ride? You know, it had Exhibit. And he'd be like, Yo, dog, you got polio. You can't breathe. So in the back of your car, we put a bubble machine. It blows bubbles while you're driving. Like, whatever happened to that? Yeah, it might have been fake, but could you imagine if we did like a semi-real one where, I don't know, pimp my derby car and we just put like TVs and low riders and fucking Crown Vic. I thought about building and selling turnkey derby cars, 
but even like this is gonna be a bone stock Monte Carlo. But by the time I get it built, I'm probably gonna have twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred dollars in it, like counting front tires, putting the cage in. Cage materials went through the roof. Uh I'll probably have the factory gas and brake, but I'll have an aftermarket shifter in here. Uh, the fuel cell, like all the time, welding the doors, nine wire. Look at front bumpers anymore, like a stock Crown Vic bumper. From what I can tell right now, they're going for 150 to $200. And I'm like, yeah, I can drive backwards, but it's nice to have something on the front for when I want to turn it around. My favorite car, that's a hard one. Uh, like, like I said in the beginning of this video, uh, Monte Carlos are growing on me. Like, it's getting to a point that's starting to be my favorite front wheel drive, but like full size. A Crown Vic like it's hard to compare the two because in front wheel drive like you can have speed and you can go around that track so fast and you know there's it seems like there's no logic to it everybody's just balls to the wall but then once you get in a big car it's more precision driving you know picking your spots playing defense making sure you don't get hit and there's way more power but when you go back and forth, like it's hard to pick one between a front wheel drive and a full size. Like for me, Monte Carlo, front wheel drive, and then full size, a Vic. But I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to paint on this one. I usually, uh, like halfway through the car, the, the build, I'll just stare at it and let the car tell me how it wants to be built. Like, like I just let the vision come to me. Uh, I'm thinking about, you know, starting to do the people that kind of sponsor me and help me out, uh, put them down the side. Like Cannonball Derby Parts, a uh, good friend of mine. Uh, just trying to support them. Uh, Chambliss Welding. Uh, old TRX Derby Wheels, uh, The Simple Solution, uh, Robbie Christian making, he makes uh, simplified harnesses for four sixes. And honestly, like, I love painting my name down the side of these cars. And I've gotten to a point where I can space it out perfectly. But I'm wondering if I'm not just painting a target on myself. Like, let's put somebody else's name down the side and see if I get gangbanged. But if we get time this year, I, I still have the Mountain Dew car. It is, uh, it's sitting out back. And if we get time this year, chasing the uh, unified points, we've talked about bringing it out of retirement and uh, fixing it up, putting it back together. <clears throat> What's up, fathead? How's the weather in Kansas? Or when you said Kansas in the house, did you mean the band? 
like dust in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. That's the only Kansas song I think I know off the top of my head. Yeah, it got up to like 80 degrees here today. Uh, you know, it seems like summer didn't even knock. It just kicked the front door in and said it's fucking hot now. I had to turn the air conditioner on last night. My balls were sticking to me, and I I can't I can't sleep like that. I I need a little bit of air. been doing this YouTube live for about an hour and a half so I think I'm gonna call it a night I got all this trash I gotta pick up and get put up usually on Wednesdays I do my podcast crashing into history on Spotify uh, I couldn't do it tonight because I'm having my first guest and he wasn't available until tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm going to have my first guest. Uh, not giving any names yet, but he did just recently race at Bristol Motor Speedway. So uh, go check out my podcast. Tell me what you guys think of it. And uh, I'm going to get off here because I think my dog just... I think my dog's got a kitten. Where'd you get that? Y'all have a great fucking week. Let's go.